So now that we have a good understanding of what a set is, we're going to show that this definition that we were using doesn't actually work. To do this, we're going to use a technique called proof by contradiction. So proof by contradiction works like this. Suppose we want to show that a statement A is true. What we do is we assume that A is false. We're assuming this. And we show that this implies something that is impossible. This symbol here means implies. It means that if this happens, then this happens. So if A being false makes something impossible happen, then it's impossible for A to be false. And so we get that A is true. Now, what is this impossible thing? Well, in math, our statements are well defined so that they cannot be both true and false at the same time. So our impossible thing is to find a statement Q such that Q is true and Q is false. So to summarize, if we want that A is true, it suffices to show that if A is false, then that implies that there is a Q such that Q is true and Q is false. So now let's apply this to our definition of a set from earlier. Let's recall that a set is a well defined collection of distinct objects. So let's look at some pathological sets now. The first one is going to be the set of all sets, or in set builder notation, the set of all x such that x is a set. Now this is a really big set. Another thing about this set is that it contains itself, which is kind of strange. We haven't seen any sets that do this yet, but here's one. Um, it's pretty easy to check that this satisfies our definition of what a set is. So I guess we can have sets that contain themselves. Okay. So now let's look at another, even more pathological set the set of all sets which don't contain themselves as an element. Hmm. Okay, well, in set builder notation, we're going to call this set S. We get the set of all x such that x is a set and this little hat symbol means and x is not an element of x. So very strange set kind of hard to picture it in your head um, but what we're going to do with this set is we're going to make a statement out of it. We're going to make the statement S is an element of S. So this is a mathematical statement. It can either be true or false. And let's figure out which one it is. So let's try to prove that it's false. Or yeah, that it's false. 
So if we want to prove that it's false or that S is not an element of S, well, we assume that S is an element of S and we see if we can derive a contradiction. Well, if S is an element of S, then um, S is a set, but S is an element of S, so it doesn't satisfy this um, condition that we set here. So it's impossible for S to be in the set. And so S is not an element of S. And so S, assuming that the statement S is an element of S is true, we get that the statement S is an element of S is false. And so this is a contradiction. So now let's assume S is not an element of S. Well, if S is not an element of S, S is a set, S is not an element of S, so it's not an element of itself, in other words. So it is in our set S. So S is an element of S. Well, that's very strange because we see that this is another contradiction, just like last time. So what this means is that we don't need to make any assumptions to get a contradiction in this system. Um, so that means that for any statement P, we can prove that P is true by assuming not P. and then show that that implies a contradiction. And that allows us to conclude that P must be true. But we can also do the same with P. So in this case, we would assume P we show that this implies a contradiction. And this contradiction is just the same one that, that we derived here. Since we didn't need any assumptions to make it, we can make it happen anytime. So we can show that P implies a contradiction. We can show that not P implies a contradiction. And so we can conclude that both P and not P are true for any statement P. And so this mathematical system that we've developed based on this definition, a uh, well-defined collection of distinct objects, is really not that interesting because everything is both true and false in it. So we don't study it very much. And next time we're going to look at one that patches up this problem. So with all this done, one thing that you are probably thinking right now is wait a moment didn't you tell me that it's impossible for a statement to be both true and false at the same time and didn't you just show that that's not the case here and so yes it's true that it is impossible for a statement to be both true and false at the same time and that is still true in this case but it is also false. So think about that for a little bit. There are more precise treatments of this sort of issue, um, but this is the gist of it.